guys and welcome back to all things ghostly we went british with it that's cringe i'm sorry um so today welcome back to all things ghostly like i said but today um we are going to be reading some ghost stories i love this stuff literally the reason why i started this podcast was to talk about like ghost stories and stuff and although like i'm gonna cover topics like kind of like how i've done uh like last week was robert the doll um the week before that was like top 10 haunted dolls um let's see what else have we done we've done an urban legend so i'm still gonna do those types of stuff too but just your standard getting online finding ghost stories from other people i'd love to hear your ghost stories as well to all my listeners slash watchers out there definitely email um the email that's linked in every description on whatever platform um with your ghost stories because i'd love to start reading those as well um but this is what i started this podcast for like i just love reading and reacting to these crazy ass stories that people post online and all of these ones are from reddit um it's kind of been my place to go to to find these stories thus far if you guys have any suggestions on where to find like cooler ones or just a variety really uh let me know um but yeah so we're just going to be doing some random stories today um none of them really have a theme or nothing but just some spooky stories to read so this first one is oh wait before we get in i wanted to give you guys an update on something that i talked about in my second no no this was the first i think first episode of my podcast which is about the claw not clawing the tapping on my attic door and if you haven't watched that episode definitely go back and listen to it um i figured it out (laughs) I debunked it. It wasn't paranormal, so sorry for the anticlimactic ending. Um, basically, I had this little, like, ghost figurine from just, like, TJ Maxx or something um, on one of my, like, makeup station tables in my room and it was tapping against the door now why did it only happen at night i'm still not sure about that i feel like my lights are already going out my little background lights so i'll have to change the batteries later um but yeah it was somehow just tapping on the attic door because it was right in front of it on that little like shelf um that i like put some of my makeup on anyway um so yeah for some reason it was just happening at night i still stand by the fact that it was weird that it was only happening at night but i moved it one day and it hasn't happened since so womp womp but yes anyway just thought i'd give you a little bit of an update on that so take that off my list of paranormal experiences anyway so this first reddit story is called goosed by a ghost so i was just drawn in by it because of the silly little title um it is by the user children of the woods so i'm not going to link any of these just because that's a lot of links but i'll always tell you guys like the username um so all creds goes to the writers obviously um so it says there is at least one resident ghost where i work it's a music venue nightclub i don't know if anybody who works there knows who it is there have been lots of people with strong emotional attachments to the place um also before we continue i do just want to say i just kind of skim through these to make sure that they're actual like encounters um but i really don't read them so that we can get my authentic reaction just thought i'd let you know so sorry if like the grammar's bad or anything i didn't look through and make sure everything was good with them so anyway back to it um i had been working there for a few days when i mentioned seeing a ghost that kept making me jump thinking someone had wandered uh in during cleaning hours which does happen occasionally the rest of the staff immediately confirmed there is a ghost everyone sees him some people quit suddenly and i don't know if it's because they were unsettled by him every encounter i've had has been non-threatening it started out catching glances from across the room then i started seeing shadows pass across doorways when i knew nobody was in the room i hate when that happens honestly okay sorry to break this up but something happens to me at work similar to this all the time i work at just like a credit union um and at in my office i have this little like ipad there i don't use it at all but it was just left over from the previous person i don't know why they left their ipad there but i use it as kind of like a rear view mirror to see if somebody's at my door behind me um because i always have a headphone in listening to morbid love them um when i'm at work so i can't always like hear if somebody's like standing there like you know how you can hear somebody walk up that type of vibe um 
so I always keep that there to just like make sure I'm not ignoring anybody and I see all the time in that reflection just through my peripherals a figure like go past and I'll look and nobody's there um I I feel like a lot of people experience that so I didn't include it in my like paranormal experiences but I still feel like that's weird like again I feel like so many people have died so there's no doubt that there are hundreds and thousands millions of spirits and ghosts just like lingering around the earth so i feel like they're they're super valid as paranormal experiences but i just feel like often people like discount that as oh you just saw something out of the corner of your eye your brain made it up type of thing but anyway let me see where did i leave off um it started out catching glances from across the room then i started seeing shadows pass across doorways when i knew nobody was in the room then i was there um, wait, then I was there a day when the door of the bathroom I was cleaning opened and I saw a person out there. I thought it was a coworker. Then when I stepped out and realized she was on the other side of the building. Oh, then I stepped out and realized she was on the other side of the building. Um, a few days later, I came out of the same bathroom after cleaning and he was standing right on the other side of the door. I expected to run smack into someone, but just passed right through him. It was warm and he vanished. Wait, why did you just run into a human being <laughs> i don't know he was standing on the other side of the door maybe it was an accident maybe she didn't like process that somebody was standing there until she was already like moving past i don't know that's funny though um maybe a month ago i was in a room alone and he gave my ass a good squeeze and tickle excuse me bitch you're kidding <laughs> It's been a long time since I've been touched by an entity and this is the first time someone has goosed me. <laughs> Dying. That's what that meant. I thought goosed meant like just, I don't know, fooled. I didn't know it meant giving your ass a little tickle. Oh my gosh. Okay, bitch, hands off unless you're given permission. What the heck? Um, I wasn't scared or offended. I thought it was hilarious. And the second I got home, I told my husband, the ghost is getting real, really familiar. He asked, did he goose you joking around? And we had a good laugh when I confirmed it. Is this a common saying to be goosed means you're ass grabbed? I did not know that. Maybe it's like a uh, where you live kind of thing. Um, a week or so ago, me and a couple coworkers, one female and a male manager were chatting and the suspect somehow got onto the ghost. Uh, the female coworker said she'd been felt up and other females, other women, I don't, other women have told her she's had her back touched and a uh, shirt, edit bra strap. Uh, I talked to her about it a couple of days ago. So it was her bra strap gently tugged um, on in a teasing way. I told them about the ass grab. This, the look on the manager's face was priceless. He had plenty of firsthand experiences with the ghost and had no reason to not believe us. It was just clearly the first time anybody had brought it up and he had no idea what he or how he was supposed to handle it. Not like he can take the ghost into his office and give it a stern talking about sexual harassment in the place of work. Uh, we assured him that we didn't actually mind the ghost touching us and he and feel wait and feel he's a very friendly entity who just gets a bit frisky sometimes i mean girl i'm glad that you're not that bothered but ghosts gotta learn their lesson too i mean come on um but that is actually pretty hilarious i'm not gonna lie if a ghost grabbed my ass i'd probably be like "Ooh, okay keep going i'm just kidding um but i feel like that is really cool obviously when you're touched by an entity it just it proves so much to you because you know how your body feels on a day-to-day -day basis so when something like tugs at your shirt you know that that's not a normal feeling that you experience you know like people have been scratched before their hair has been pulled so all of the, those things happen and it really just reassures that person that there is something touching you because you know you know little slips of the hair like sometimes my hair will fall down my shoulder something like it just was like hunched over so sometimes it'll like fall if i'm like turning my head i know how that feels i know how it feels like if my shirt just like readjusts slightly so people know when something strange is happening to them that doesn't normally happen so that's definitely something um all right so the next one is called something on the upper floor and it is by user no dash argument dash five three two one hello everyone hello although you're not talking to me i guess i am everyone so hello back to you um 
Okay, so he says, I'm from Serbia. Well, I don't know the the pronouns, so sorry. They say, um, I'm some, from Serbia, and a lot of the people I know believe in everything paranormal, especially old people. You can't find any that don't. Huh, that's actually very interesting because normally I feel like, you know, like in American history i feel like we've definitely like denounced paranormal a lot so for older people in serbia sorry i just hit my table um to always believe that's that or most of them believe that is really cool um so i grew up with paranormal stories in my family and a few times i experienced some on my own but not so scary as some people in my family if you guys like the story and if you want i will write every story i know but i will start with this one here it goes. So my paternal grandfather told me this story when I was younger. He was lieutenant colonel at Yugoslav Air Force and a test pilot for new planes. Very smart man, really a man of science, but his whole life believed in everything paranormal, period. Sometimes it's just something in between, you know? I feel like there are other layers to, you know, reality that don't always have to be super scientific, but science is definitely very important. So we have to meet in the middle, you know? Um, he lived half an hour away from us, but two streets from my house. We have a small vineyard orchard with a cottage where my grandfather spend, uh, spends his every day since he retired. Um, the cottage is constructed in such a way that it has ground floor it has a ground floor and a first floor but there is only one room on each floor. There isn't a way to go up on the first floor from the bottom one. You entered every floor from outside. Oh, okay. Hmm. From the upper one, there is a small balcony in front of the entrance with a staircase leading to it. So up until then, my grandfather from time to time slept there when he worked there late. On this evening, he decided to sleep there and get up early to work on the vines. He laid down on the couch on the bottom floor and fell asleep. In some time of the night, it was pitch black, he was woken up by the sound of footsteps in the room above him. He thought that someone broke in, so he reached for his service pistol on the table beside him. At that moment, he... Wait, at the moment he touched him, he began laughing? What touched him? The pistol? I don't know. He described it like a witch laughing. Oh, no, so this is an entity. Oh, so maybe from the moment he touched the pistol, laughing began. Um, he described it like a witchy laugh, crazed woman laugh, exactly like witches laugh in the movies, and it was loud. He just froze with his hand on his pistol and couldn't move because of fear. That is me. When people talk about fight or flight, I am froze. That is my, <laughs> that is my instinct. I'm just like, ah, what do I do? I don't know. Um, anyway, he said he lay there, he laid there for him hours and the thing upstairs never stopped laughing for the end of the story i'm not sure either everything stopped when the when the first morning rooster began crowing that's very poetic when the first morning rooster um i don't wake up with roosters so can't relate but um or when it dawned um but he immediately left the cottage and went home never again in his life did he sleep there yeah i wouldn't either uh he didn't even stay there past sundown period you gotta avoid that shit um as soon as the sun became orange he would leave that's it for that one let me know what you people think about it well i enjoyed it it was it was a little dose of creep a little bit of a hee hee that's a little creepy um so that was a little bit of a shorter one, but definitely uh, would not fuck with that. Um, a loud witchy laugh. Yeah, that is very, very creepy. I don't approve. Wouldn't vibe with it. No. Especially during your sleep. I will say, like, I like hearing about haunted things. I would even be open to, like, going to haunted places. Um, not by myself. But, you know, when it comes to something in your own home or, like, where you're staying the night somewhere... Um, no, I'm not into that. So, the next one is called, I May Have Met a Demon as a Child, and it is by Pigeon underscore Fox 93. Um, this can be quite long as I'm a storyteller at heart with very vivid, with a very vivid recollection of what happened. We'll leave a quick TLDR, I don't know what that means, at the end since I don't know how to cover it at the beginning for those who don't want to spoil the journey. Again, I'm very new to Reddit, so I don't know what that means. Um, so I may have met a demon. This is something 
that at the time just left me confused, but after getting more info as a teenager, left me a bit scared and wondering what would have happened if I didn't speak with my mom first. So here we go. My sister, 13, hopped off the bus before me, 7, so that's our ages, um, and I moved my short child legs as fast as I could after her as she went to our house next to the one that served us served as a bus stop. The moment she stepped inside, she slammed the door shut in my face. Damn. Before I could even wrap my tiny hands around the doorknob, she clicked the uh, deadbolt into place. Aw. Why is she be a mean? Um, I screamed her name and beat my fists against the door, but to no avail. I was locked out and was going to have to wait for my mom to get home in an hour. Dang, siblings are really the worst sometimes. Um, this was a regular occurrence, so while I was crying angry tears, I went to sit on our porch swing and started to fill out my homework. Oh, just a worksheet or two, counting coins and telling time. The little baby, I'm sorry this happened. I feel so bad now. Uh, we lived in a small rural town with a population of maybe 600, the type of place where in the 90s no one locked their doors in the day and you knew everyone. My great aunt and uncle actually lived next door and I could have waited at their house but the weather was nice and I was mad at my sister, period. Um, I was going to sit out here and brood. Uh, the fact you knew everyone in a place like this is why I felt unnerved when a young boy about my age with curly black hair came up onto our porch and sat on the swing beside me. I didn't recognize him and he had honest to god white feathered wings excuse me the house we grew up in was haunted by past relatives so i didn't even question the wings at the time i had seen many strange figures when awoken in the dead of night by strange sounds but still i never i had never seen this one and was staring at him like excuse me who the fuck are you literally what i just said um but he ignored my obviously questioning stare until i actually spoke up to state the question politely not sure i actually knew the f word at that age mm, you probably did <laughs> we all get that word very early in life it feels like um he seemed a little taken aback when i first spoke but introduced himself as valak uh v l v a l a c uh, and began to converse easily with me i quickly felt at ease talking with him and as a child and e an even adult who will talk up anyone wait and as a child and even adult who would talk up anyone this itself was not strange okay whatever uh so she's a talkative person that's cool um i'm a dog i'm like a dog <laughs> i cannot do this right now i don't know why i'm like struggling uh i'm like a dog i struggle in every episode what am i saying it's the ring light okay it literally blinds me and i'm looking at my laptop down here so it's like this stark light and then i'm looking down here and i'm like huh anyway um i'm like a dog strangers are just friends i haven't met in most instances i introduced myself and we talked about the things that happened that day and about our pets he spoke of which of his which i thought was named dragon but might be a dog when he asked me if i wanted to meet dragon being the good kid who didn't wander off expectedly i said i had to ask my mom whose car was pulling into the driveway mm, she might have been saving your ass um she came up to the porch and i told my sister I told her my sister locked me out before asking if I could go meet my new friend's pet. Her eyes skimmed our porch and right over to right over the boy I was motioning to without even pausing on him before she said I could after we sorted out my sister as she forced a bright smile on her face. A smile I learned later was what she gave my encourage wait is what she gave when my when encouraging my imaginative imaginative play i cannot speak she probably thought at that moment i created an imaginary friend to entertain myself while locked out of the house fair assumption but i could uh i could tell pretend from reality and i was sure he was real my mom went to unlock the door as I went to her side and she asked me my friend's name. I told her before whispering I thought he might be a guardian angel since he has wings and he did come at a time where I was alone and upset. My mom's face went completely white and when that door was open she practically threw me inside and slammed it shut behind us before finding a bottle of holy water and basically showered me in it. I was hurt and confused as I was given no explanation for this and wasn't allowed outside for weeks, alone for weeks. Um, I never spoke of him again not wanting to 
to upset my mom, though I swore sometimes I saw I caught a glimpse of him in other places. I had no answers for what happened that day until I was a teenager. Me and my friends were terrorizing the local books a million uh, when trying to be the fake edgy teens we were. We found a demonology book and wanted to pursue it. Per per use it? I don't know. Anyway, I opened up toward the I opened up towards the back to the V's since it was basically a demon dictionary. I want to point out now that this was before even the first Conjuring movie came out and had only heard the name from this person's lips and I don't even know if I was subconsciously looking for it but when I saw Valak in that section the memory of that boy came back full force and the description while not a direct quote since it's been years since I saw this book was a demon that looked like a child with angel wings and rode a two-headed dragon I don't know if I actually met a demon that day I'm not sure how much I believe in those things but the coincidences made my blood run cold and now it's been over a decade since I saw that entry and I still sometimes wonder what would have happened if I had gone with him that day? And the explanation for my mom's reaction? She would have come across it at least once. Her and my, her mom were really into Christian theology. We inherited many binders on the topic when her mom passed. My mom recognized that name and description and truly feared for my safety that day. Wow. So is Valak like a name in The Conjuring? Because uh, I'm not going to lie, I don't watch horror movies. Sir, so, I don't know. Y'all, you'll have to let me know if you want to. Um, I could just look it up, but I'm trying to be interactful, okay? I'm trying. Um, so yeah, definitely very crazy. I will say that it is very common for demons to disguise themselves as something else. Like oftentimes it is like children or past relatives, or in this case, an angel, which doesn't shock me whatsoever because again, demons, they know that they're evil and they want to try to hide that until they can rope you in. And then that's when they prey on you. Um, wow. I'm, I'm very, very creeped out by that. That I, I'm just so hurt that your sister really played you like that. She said stay outside. At least it was a nice day though. Anyway, on to the next. This one is a little bit of a shorter one as well. Um, it is called Fake Ghost Reader App by user jcjjohn1031, <laughs> period. Um, and this one stuck out to me because of the title because again, if you watched my second episode, um, I mentioned that I had an, ex an experience with a ghost reader app that obviously I know is not like trustworthy, but it aligned in that moment and I was like, oh my god, so I just wanted to see what this person had to say. Uh, so I and three friends were at a lake after dark. Love that scenery. Uh, we love deep we live deep in the Appalachian Mountains, uh, so it was fairly eerie. We decided to uh, download one of those fake ghost reader apps for just shits and giggles. That was just to set the stage for this story. To begin with, we were talking through a little trail. We were, sorry, excuse me. We were walking through a little trail. Um, it was about 9 p.m. and we saw a bird. It was walking around the ground and we followed it um, a few feet, we stopped, it stopped, and it kind of looked at us. It was almost like the bird was trying to get us to follow it. When we started going back out to, to our vehicles, we saw it wander in, wait, I scrolled down too much, into complete and utter darkness. Personally, I've always heard that it's a bad omen to see a bird at night. I've never heard that, but interesting. Um, next, we were a little spooked so we left that area of the park slash lake we went out onto a gravel road that led further out onto the lake we were at the end of that road and we decided to use the app we were waiting on it to read anything and one of my friends barely punched me in the arm not enough for it to make sound but all you could hear was the app everything was so quiet you could hear a pin drop the app said boy hit uh, we were all pretty freaked out by it, but then it started saying stuff like parents, abuse, tense. I refuse to name any names in this story except for the one middle name toward the end. Um, but one of my friends was abused as a kid. Oh, that sucks. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm not sure how it knew this, but it was scary. We decided to trek further up the lake to a more lit up area. When we used it there, it said stop, run, exit, inevitable. We started our vehicles and absolutely hauled ass to a different part of the park. When we got there, 
um, to where we were going, which was close to a main highway, and stop. Um, we did it again, and it started working. It said, Kelly Children Fire Vehicle parents one of my friends who was there had just been in a car that caught on fire with kids and his aunt kelly so we were pretty spooked when we sorry we were pretty spooked so we went to the nearest church parking lot to sit (laughs) Uh, we sat there for a good while and just talked until we all talked ourselves into going back when we went sorry we went all the way back to a light pole next to the water We used the app. At first, there was nothing scary, but toward the end, it said stay fun. We took that as our excuse to leave. On the way out of the park, we did the app while driving. It didn't say much, but it it was what it said was terrifying. It said, run devil Eric. My friend who was writing with me has the middle name Eric. And after that night, and after that, we called it a night. I'm not sure what to make of all this, but overall, it was a pretty bone-chilling experience. Please leave your suggestions if we should go back and do it again. Da, 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 da. Um, and I guess the app was called Ghost Talker Light. Um, I can't remember. I think the one I used was just called like Ghost Radar or something. Um, but honestly, it sounds like... Um, at first it said like the app said stop run exit like you know get out of here and then it's very possible that when it started saying like stay fun um that was something else like taking over and again whereas i will say i don't really believe in these uh like ghost reader apps like i think that they're not super like efficient forms of like ghost hunting um but i think that it's it can make sense in some instances like again my own experience with uh thinking that I was in contact with my dad in that hospital story and him saying uh graduation and school or college or whatever he said I can't remember um but basically that was what was going on in my life at the time so it was just accurate and sometimes again when communicating with ghosts you have to go with what you can get even if it's not the most like believable or convenient way of communicating you just have to kind of take what you can um because it is hard for spirits to like give all their energy to make contact with a whole other realm of life and same for us like it's hard to get contact with them and a big part of that is just like believing in them and you know feeding your energy into truly believing and saying what you can um so i'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there i hope you guys enjoyed this these little stories let me know if you like these i definitely prefer them over like the the more like you know not formal episodes but i like reading people's stories over just like articles online um and again make sure to send in yours um i want to hear your guys's experiences so i can read them here as well um but yeah i am going to wrap this episode up comment down below your favorite um story if you're on youtube and if not make sure to follow me on tiktok it is at all things ghostly podcast and instagram at all things ghostly and let me know your thoughts on this episode and i will see you guys in my next one goodbye i am just very sing-songy today and i don't know why that is but anyway see you guys later